Hi guys, I'm Lee. Welcome back to the Barham Engines channel. I'd just like to start today's video by giving a massive thanks to all you guys that watch our videos regularly and to all the subscribers for not just watching the videos, uh, for all your kind comments um, and, and helpful comments, but to all you guys that have been putting your trust in us and sending us work since the channel has been going. We've got so much work here. It's all the type of work that we absolutely love doing, so we're really thankful for that. Um, if you haven't already, guys, please smash that subscribe button and do comment down below. Yeah, just a massive thanks, guys. Anyway, what we've got going on in the workshop today. First of all, just a little bit on the kit car. We've gone over the kit car, we've checked everything, um, the water level, oil level, all the fluids, um, done a nut and bolt check. We've got our GoPro mounted here now with the, the wire to charge it permanently. And we've also downloaded our, our race technologies software. So if I just show you this, this is really good fun, this. Um, so what I didn't realize is with the Race Technologies Dash 2 that we've got, Race Technologies actually do a software for the GoPro. So the GoPro inside, not gonna get too technical, but it's got various gyros, it's got GPS, um, accelerometers and all that business in there. So what this program does is if we just record a video of us going around the track, then this software here sucks all the data out of the GoPro and puts it all into whatever format you want. And it's, you see, we've done a, we did a little tester yesterday. We drove around the block several times. We've got Carlos to drive around the block and then we suck the data out and it gives you a, you see it there, it gives you a Google Maps view with the, the runs in various colors. You've got blue to red, blue being braking, red being accelerating, and it, so it shows you what you've got. It's got, I mean, it can do loads of stuff, but here we've got your speed um, on, the very, on the whole run. So you've got each lap here, you see. Um, that there highlighted is your fastest lap. It's got your sector times and your fast and your lap times. So highlighted is your fastest lap, and then you've got highlighted your fastest sectors, and it will do you things like a simulated best lap and stuff like that. So we've got the track day on Sunday down at Perrinporth, so we're gonna give this a go. Although you're not really meant to time, we're not sort of timing as such, we're just gonna suck the data out at the end and um, see where, we'll do a video next week showing um, sort of overlaying myself and Carlos's laps and see how different we are as drivers really. So yeah, really good bit of kit that. Excited to, to see what that's like on the track. Right guys, so I was hoping the, the all jets were gonna turn up so I could start this Cosworth block, but they haven't turned up as yet. If they turn up this afternoon, then I will start it. We've got the cylinder head, it's had all the seats cut. Did a video yesterday on cutting those seats. That's for the S13. So just facing that now, and then we can get that all together. Got the Evo Mitsubishi cylinder head here. Got all the seats on those, the same as I did on the S13. Reface the cylinder head now, and um, that's ready to be assembled as soon as we get the gaskets. Oh, we've got this Cosworth block came in yesterday with the crank. I've just rebored that to plus five, ordered a set of pistons, then I've got to put pockets in. And as soon as that heads off the mill, I've got to face this block and finish honing it once I get the pistons and, and that's complete. Oh, we've got to check and polish the crank shaft. And we've got the cylinder head, I think, somewhere. Yeah, here it is. Carlos has soda blasted that. We're just waiting for guides to put in there and we can cut the seats and reface it and that cylinder head is done. I am giving Carlos a little lesson on how to knife edge cranks. So since we did the, lank, the last crankshaft, the knife edge Steve Renault crank, got two Cosworth cranks to knife edge, S13 crank. The guy that we've done the cylinder head for and got the block for, he wants, he's rang up, he wants this one done. So what I'm going to do is give Carlos a lesson to do this. So as you can see, we've just just sort of give him a little first lesson on how to how to use the the cross slide here. He's not 
massively familiar with this lathe. Um, you know what it's like when you just start to sort of learn something, it's just a confidence thing. You can do the basics, but he hasn't yet moved the cross slider and learned how to use this um, and sort of put a cut on by feel. So that's what I'm teaching him to do. But there's one problem with this. Um, as I say, we've only touched on there, so it's not really important yet. But if I spin this crank up, wibbly wobbly um, so basically what it is this hole in the end here and we found this before the hole in the end is probably put in uh, drilled and tapped after uh, like on a separate process so it's not exactly running true so what we're going to do is use this little contraption so what this does it's got sort of bronze inserts and you've, you basically set it up running on a main so you can set it up so it runs true and then we're going to have to face a true taper on the end of here just so when this goes in the whole crank runs true so we'll just keep the center in the end of the crank at the moment just to sort of roughly center it up and what we're going to do is this part here sits on the bed then you back these two off and sort of do them up till they just touch on the main either side. Then you put the cover over and put the top one down. And then you know that when you take the center out the end, it's gonna be running as it was before. And then you just adjust them to true it up. Right, so we put the steady on the bed and we just wanna make sure that obviously, once we put these up, it is gonna sit on the main. Um, but it's also not going to touch anywhere on the steady and on the web there so we'll just turn it over by hand and make sure it's going to clear and on the back and that's as, about as far as we want to go on that so what we're going to do is just tighten these up just so they touch on the main do the, the bottom ones first then the top one and then we're going to remove the remove, remove the center and see how true it runs using some mold grips because it's a bit stiff in there but better to be a bit stiff than a bit slack. You just want to touch on there. Is it touching on there? No, not yet. Yeah, so that one's touched on there now. No gap. We'll do this one. I know we're going to have all the experts commenting on using the mold grips on here but whatever, whatever works in here goes Keep going buddy. Yeah, that's it. It's touching on. Now that's locked on. Just tighten the top one. Just very loop free. That's it. Now if we remove this here, and if we put the speed down, just run it up. The crank down is running perfect. We do um, perfect but that chamfer in the end of the crank there you can see it's on the pit so we're just going to true that off and hopefully once we put the centre in the crank will be perfect. So all we want to do is just touch on there and true it off. steady out now we put the center in the end and I noticed when I um, when I knife edged the Renault crank last a few of you guys said why don't you use a four jaw chuck instead of a three jaw and then we can you can get it perfect on this end to be honest we would but if we put it in a three jaw and clock it and it runs true there's no point setting the four jaw up it's just another process that just takes longer for for no need so this is a bloody good three jaw and um, providing that everything this end runs true then it's it usually is on point and bear in mind it's even if it's a couple of thou out it's going to be balanced afterwards anyway so we'll just um, start this up and as you can notice now it runs absolutely true so 
in theory, once you set the steady up on this main, I mean, don't worry about that, we've got to polish it anyway, but once you set it up on the steady on the main and, and just face that taper in the end of there, in theory, it's going to run absolutely on point to the, to the main. So we're not going to get it much better than that. So I'm just going to continue to give Carlos his lesson. So as you can see, Carlos has done the first one. I think that's enough. As I said to you before, I'm not going to go too much into this because we've covered this already, but when it just starts touching on the other side, that's more than enough there. It's going to cut through the air a lot more. And he's just started to do this side here. Well, in fact, he's nearly finished this one. So we're going to turn the crank over in a minute and it uh, looks like he's getting the hang of that. Two more cozies to do after this. Um, so yeah, ideal. Well, thanks again, guys, for watching. Until another video, take care.